Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our studies of 2 Kings. Today we're in 2 Kings chapter 11, and this chapter focuses on Athaliah and the raising up of the next king after Ahaziah is going to die. And there's going to be several different parts, and there's not even so much going to be application as far as uh, the types of things that we should do or shouldn't do as much as it is historical narrative in this particular chapter. But I want us to notice some things that we can pull out to see some areas of importance for how we handle things, how we deal with things, but also matters of importance to the people of Israel. And so let's look at a few things here in Second Kings chapter 11. First of all, as you begin the chapter, you can't help but see Athaliah's power grab that's going to take place here. Athaliah, remember, is the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. She was married to the son of King Jehoshaphat in Judah. And when King Jehoram comes to the throne, Athaliah's husband, she is co-regent with him until his death. Then his son Ahaziah is going to take the throne. And Ahaziah is going to reign for several years until he is going to be killed by Jehu. When this takes place, we come into chapter 11. And Athaliah has decided she is going to take the throne for herself. And so what she does is she begins by going through and murdering all of those who could be considered heirs to the throne, all of the royal heirs to the throne of Judah. It's going to come out to about 70 individuals. And the, they're going to be called uh, sons of uh, Ahaziah in one sense. But really what they wind up being is all of those who could possibly take the throne. And remember, this was in a time when kings often had more than one wife. And so there would be offspring uh, in, uh, from a number of different uh, family lineages, if you want to call them that, at this particular time. And so Athaliah is trying to make sure that there is no contest to the throne uh, that she is about to take. And she does wipe out all of the royal heirs except one. We are going to see here uh, in chapter 11 that in the midst of all of this power that uh, Athaliah is going to try to coalesce to herself, there is going to be one that is going to be secreted away, and that is Joash. He is going to be saved by, Ath uh, by Ahaziah's sister. She is going to take him into the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. And there he is going to be hidden for seven years. And, and in many respects, it is the perfect hiding place. Because Athaliah, like her parents, was one who was a devotee of worship to Baal. And so because of that, she was never going to enter into the temple of the Lord. She was never going to have anything to do with the temple of the Lord. And so, as such, it is the perfect place for a child to be saved and to be taken. He is going to remain there for six years, which means that he is going to be about a year old when he is going to be brought to the temple because he is going to take the throne at the age of seven. But for six years, Athaliah is going to reign in Jerusalem, and Joash is going to be raised in the temple. And the key figure who is overseeing Joash's raising is a man by the name of Jehoiada. Jehoiada is going to do several things, as we see here in chapter 11. And he is really going to prove himself to be the, the influential figure for the work of the Lord in Jerusalem at this particular time. 
because he is going to oversee the raising of Joash. He's also going to make sure that Joash remains safe. You read here in chapter 11 how he is going to set guards around him at all times and that he is going to manufacture a way for Joash to be protected no matter where he goes and no matter what takes place along, around the temple grounds and, and wherever he might be, there are guards around to ensure that he is safe. But then you also have a situation later on where, beginning in verse number 13, uh, as all of these things are being put into place and, and as the people are starting to become aware of Joash and they begin to praise who he is and what he is and what he means for them, Athaliah is going to find out. And Athaliah is going to raise up cries of treason, but at the same time, she doesn't have anybody backing her. She doesn't have anybody standing with her at this point. She's ruling by her own power and her own authority. And so when Jehoiada commands the captains of the hundreds and the officers of the army to take her, there is no big battle that is fought. There is no war. There is no resistance. She is taken and she will be executed for her crimes. And Joash is going to be placed on the throne. But Jehoiada, verse 17 of the chapter, is also going to make a covenant with the people between the Lord, the king, and the people. And he is going to seek to bring the people back to the Lord, and he's going to remove the worship of Baal from Jerusalem. Jehoiada is going to be a prime example of a servant of God and of one who takes care of those who are in need, of one who is going to guide the people and help devote the people to the work of God, but also who is going to stand up for what is right. And so there are great lessons that we can learn from Jehoiada. But here in chapter 11, we see a situation that arises, and it wasn't an uncommon situation in, in monarchies and, and in many kingdoms around the world where these power grabs are going to take place by those who have the means and the opportunity. And yet, God still finds a way to be able to ensure that the line of David and that the promised family who was going to be reigning in Judah retains the throne. That's what we see in 2 Kings chapter 11. Next time, we'll come back and we'll begin looking at 2 Kings chapter 12. I hope you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.